Hi guys, my name is Karthik and I'm from ExecuteAutomation.com and welcome to part 20 of our build deploy test with Jenkins 2.0 for Java and C Sharp. And in this video, we'll be talking about parallel cross browser testing with Jenkins 2.0. And before watching this part, I would request you to watch part 18 since this part is going to be a complete continuation of that part. All right, so let's get started. Parallel cross-browser testing. So cross-browser testing is one of the most important part of a UI testing due to large ecosystem of browsers and the problem with CSS or JavaScript behaving differently in different browsers. And that's why we are majorly going for a cross-browser testing because cross-browser testing is one of the most important part in any organization because you might have encountered where your manager will come and say that we have to test the application in Internet Information Server or Firefox or Chrome, something like that. So cross-browser is important to test the same functionality in multiple browser and see if the application really behaves as expected. And running hundreds of tests on each and every browser manually or in an automated fashion is really a time-consuming process. And hence, parallel execution is the only answer to resolve this issue. For instance, if you're going to run a test on a Chrome browser, once the build is being kicked in and your test has to be performed on a Chrome browser, it's okay. But if you want to perform the same test on a Chrome, Firefox, and IE after each and every build is being kicked in, then it's going to take a time because if one test case, it's okay. But if you have like thousands of test cases running each test in different browser is going to take like two hours, then your automated test is going to take six hours for running in three different browsers. So it's really important that you also take care of what is called as a parallel execution. So how can we achieve this parallel execution then? Well, in Jenkins, we have something called as parallel, where we can achieve this parallelism by running the test on a different agent using the parallel keywords. Again, here we are not really going to change any of the code in the C Sharp project because you might have encountered where if you're going to use a parallel test for your framework or in your source code of the automation, you have to change a lot of things. Basically, you have to take care of the web driver instance variable where you need to make that web driver variable for each and every browser to be available. For instance, if you say the web driver driver is equal to new Firefox driver, then it's going to run the test only for the Firefox driver, right? And if you try to make use of a Chrome driver, it is going to throw you an error because it is already set to Firefox driver. So you need to have some dependency injections or contest injections in your test. And you have to carry the object of the web driver into your test across the framework and make the operation as expected. So in order to overcome all these problem, we are going to make a few changes in the framework though, but Jenkins parallel is going to behave different way. You are going to specify the execution of a test in different browsers by means of some parameter or something like that. Once you do that, and then your test is going to run on different agents, which is in your Jenkins already configured. And again, if you ask, what is this agent? Please go ahead and watch part 18 of this course, because we have already discussed about agents and how to configure agents on part 17, 18, I guess, right? So you can watch that and understand how things work. So this is what we're going to do in this particular course. And in this video, we will be configuring a single test to perform an execution using the Jenkins. And in the next video, we'll be trying to execute the parallel execution. Again, this is going to be a stepping stone for our next video. So please watch this video so that you can have a clear understanding of what we're going to discuss in our next video. So let's see this in action and understand how things work. So for that, I'm going to flip to our Jenkins as usual. So, so far in our project, we have been working on these projects, as you can see here, the basic EA freestyle, .NET freestyle, .NET pipeline. And this is the one which we were using at the last, right, in our previous days. And we try to configure our test execution to run based on triggers as well in our previous videos. And what I'm going to do this time is, as you can see here, our test is actually running in only one browser. Uh, or maybe a default execution. But actually, this project, the Selenium Inunit Param, is a very, very unique project where I have also explained how you can parameterize the browser type from a command line interface. 
meaning you can also pass the browser type from a command line. So if you ask where is this information that are actually sitting, if you directly go to our exit automation website, you can see there's an article saying passing parameters to any unit test via CLI using params. And you can see that we have something called as hyphen params, which is something you can pass from the command line interface of the end unit. And you can just pass your command line interface for the for the browser type and you can perform the operation. So you can see that in our code inside, we have parameterized the browser type based on the value that we are passing in. So you can see this is the code that we have written here where I'm getting the browser type from a command line interface using this particular option here. As you can see here, this is hyphen hyphen params and there is a browser is equal to Firefox. And if we just pass this, you can pass the value of Firefox into your test code and it is actually a strongly typed as you can see the browser type is actually an enum so it is going to parse that particular strongly type into this perfect enum and then it's going to return the browser type for you and based on the browser type that you have passed in from the parameter you are going to execute the test once again guys these are something we have already discussed in this video as you can see here so please go ahead and watch those videos which is part 27 of our BDD video series so you can just watch there right so what I'm going to do is I'm not really going to deep dive into this particular information rather I can quickly show you how things work so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to copy this guy I'm just going to copy this hyphen hyphen params colon browser is called a Firefox and then I'm going to come back to our dotnet pipeline configuration and here I'm going to pass the params as Firefox here for our test so what is really going to happen is it is going to run the test on the Firefox browser instead of Chrome browser, right? So if you don't believe me, I'm just going to save this particular job. And then if I try to build now, you can see that it is going to run the test only in the Firefox browser rather than running in the Chrome browser. So the checkout is done and the restoration of NuGet is going to really happen. All right. And then there is going to be a build and the test has begun. So once the test has begun, we expect the test to launch a Firefox browser. So I'm just waiting for the Firefox browser to spawn. All right, seems like the Firefox browser test is actually running behind the scene. It is actually, all right, it seems like the Firefox browser has started initiation. You can see that the Firefox browser is running here and the test has begun already. So it is running the test of the exit automation in one browser and it is also running the test of the Google search in the Firefox browser. So there are like two browsers is being opened here. You can see that the another browser has opened and it is running the Google Chrome, Google test again only in the Firefox browser. So it is not at all using the Chrome browser here, which is super cool, right? So this is how you can see that we can parameterize the browser type over here within the oops it has somehow failed i don't know what is that so if i come down a little bit what does it say all right it seems like some kind of exception which is okay but the point is to show like how the things are actually working all right so now what i'm going to do is again i'm going to go back to my configure option here what i'm going to do is this time for the stage instead of the normal sequential execution you can see that the two browsers actually spawned one by one each after one another right i'm going to run them parallelly in multiple machines so in order to do that i mean if you want to run the test on a firefox browser then if you want to run a test on a chrome browser i am going to write a stage here this time instead of the uh, test i'm going to change this to parallel testing or maybe parallel test and then I'm going to use a keyword called parallel and then here I'm going to say Firefox, right? So this is actually like a tag or a value. You can specify anything you want. You can just specify FF or whatever you like. This is like a tag, right? So here I'm going to just say like for the Firefox, you just run this in parallel. So I'm going to copy this over here, right? And then 
for running in the Chrome, we can just specify once again a tag here. And here you can just copy this and paste it over here. And instead of browse as Firefox, you can change this to oops. You can change this to Chrome. Right? So this is gonna run the test on a Chrome browser. Right? We do further modification in our next video to understand how things work instead of bumping all the information on the same video and making things more harder. So guys, please stay tuned for our next video to understand how things work. So once again, thank you very much for watching this video and have a great day.